If you're anything like me and you come across a piece of furniture like this, you fall in love instantaneously with its charm and its character, but very usually it has problems that need fixing. So today's tutorial is all about the fixing of the problems on an old piece of furniture before we start the renovation with paintwork. Okay, so to my knowledge, at this stage, I've noticed about four fixes that this piece could do with before we start any paintwork. And the first one was visible to me when I saw this piece on Marketplace. I could see it in the seller's photographs, and that is the apertures of the drawers are all out. So I think this piece of furniture has been stored in a UK garage where the temperature has fluctuated from a, a damp winter to a really warm summer. And it's made the divider, the top divider here, it's made it bow outwards and it's kind of making a bigger gap between the top drawer and that top divider. And also it's pulled away on the corners because it's kind of gone in an arc. The middle divider has done the same thing. The gaps at either end are bigger, it's bowing downwards. Now that's going to be a tougher fix for me um, because there's nothing to support it from anywhere else. But we'll give a little bit of a go, see if we can kind of bend it around a little bit. The top one, I've got an idea for that and we can kind of push that down and make that good. I don't want to take the charm out of this piece. This is what drew me to the piece. I think it needs to be rustic, kind of, um, it's a cottage piece to me. I think it needs to be kind of a little bit wobbly in its overall um, state but there are a few more issues that we'll look at a little later on as we go through these fixes. The first fix, how to remedy the bow in the top support. So I located all of the screws underneath that connected the support to the top section. Then I made a couple of shims of wood using an old paint steering stick and push them under the center parts of the bowed timber to push that section down. Once I'd got this nice and level, I went back in with my screws and screwed it back shut. And then I will go around and fill that gap underneath the top section and the support with some decorator's cork. Also, I decided to screw the top surface down to the main supports at the sides just to push down the two corners just to get a perfectly level surface. The middle support is going to be a lot more difficult to deal with. That's because there's nothing to attach any screws to. So how I went about this, trying to bend that middle support back into position is to add a lot of moisture to the timber and use the lower drawer and some more paint stair sticks just to wedge that support upwards and leave it overnight. Hopefully tomorrow I will end up with something that's kind of gone back into position.
whilst I wait for my draw divide to kind of bow out the other way, I'm going to leave the prop in. If you can leave it for 48 hours like that, I'm sure you'll get great results. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do my fixes and move on with this project. And as you can see, problem number two, woodworm treatment. This is um, a problem with a lot of English furniture. I think in other countries you get termite problems. In this country, we get woodworm. Now, a few things about woodworm. If you knock on the affected areas and sawdust comes out of those holes, that means that the woodworm is probably active. I've done that all over the bottom of this piece and nothing is coming out. I know that this woodworm hole is completely, the bug that lived inside has definitely died or vacated the building probably because this piece of furniture has been stored in a central heated home. Woodworm don't like warm houses. So that's something that I don't worry about almost. I've got pieces of old furniture, timber furniture that have definitely had woodworm and I've not even treated them. But because this is for sale, once this is renovated, it will be for sale. And some of my customers do watch my videos. I want to make sure that they will know that this is completely safe for their home and it's not gonna affect any of the timber in their homes. So I will be treating it with Cupinol um, Complete wood, wood, wood Treatment. So this is for everything, it clears everything out. Um, there's a downside to treating um, natural timber with woodworm treatment. Sometimes you'll get a lot of um, bleed through with chalk paint. Um, I'm not worrying about that because this piece has been stripped um, of layers of paint to the timber again, and that also gives me bleed through. So I'll worry about that issue when I get to it. So I will be filling um, the holes with a paintbrush with the woodworm treatment, making sure it all goes into those holes. And then I'll be using some filler to fill the holes so they're not visible anymore. Um, so it doesn't put off any potential buyers. It looks as good as new once it's painted over the top.
Okay, so issue number three, we have down here, we have some chipped veneer. I've picked off everything that's loose. I think this has probably happened because whoever had this, it was painted and then they stripped it. And the stripper can kind of loosen the glue underneath the veneer. Dampness can remove the veneer. So I've peeled back everything that's loose if it's a big chunk of veneer, you could go under and glue it back. Um, but with this, it had already frayed away. The other thing that I've done, this was an extra fix, this little motif on here, which I quite like, it was missing the end of that circle. So I've just used a two part filler. Um, in other countries, it could be called Bondo. I've mixed it up and I've quickly made a matching side which I'll sand down and smooth out a little bit later on so it matches the other side. So that was another fix that I needed to do. So let's go in with some two part filler and all I'm going to do is just into, into those chips in the veneer and of course we'll be sanding this later Two part filler or bondo goes off very quickly. So you can move on pretty quickly from the fill to sand. Can I get my hand in? Let me move this. It's difficult that way around. That's it. So this should just disguise any frayed edges. Try not to overfill because you'll have a lot of sanding the other side. To do it the other way around. That's it. And once you've sanded on that first sand, you may need to go back in if there's any um, open areas that are a bit lower down, if it's a large hole that you're filling. I've also filled the holes on the top surface where I screwed through the timber. It's gonna be painted. If you was gonna really do a kind fix to it you maybe would have put a, a wooden dowel following the grain of the timber on top to hide the screw hole but this is going to be painted it's been painted before and it's been stripped and it's going to be painted again so if somebody strips it later that'll be their job to come back and fix those issues a little later on Pretty good. There we go. Check if there's any more anywhere else. And then we can move on to the next fix. Okay, so I'm on fix number four. I have actually done fix number five already, and that was the cupboard door. The cupboard door didn't quite close properly, it didn't quite meet. All it was, was a couple of missing screws. So I've added them to the hinges. We all know how to uh, reapply a screw. So I've not shown that. Back to um, fix number four, which is this top plinth, the lovely decorative piece at the top. These plinths normally on British furniture have these um, dowels that are 
uh, that connect the top to the bottom. So they're easily removed, but they just kind of slot into the top surface there and there. There's two on here. This one on this side has snapped off and it is embedded into the top surface. So I'm gonna add some more dowel. I found this, this is a, a spindle from the back of a chair that I kept. I thought it would come in handy for, for jobs like this. Um, it's slightly bigger than the original, but I'm sure it will work. I cut a small section off and sanded the edges off. And I'm gonna go back to the same holes and make that a little bit larger and re-screw or drill out the old wood that's left inside the back plinth. and that is the draw stay. As you can see on this side, there is a piece of timber that stops the draw from falling too far inwards. So I've cut off a little bit of ply board at the same depth and I'm gonna add it to the draw and I can just see where the paint has been stripped. I can just see where the original draw stay was. So I'm gonna apply that to the internal part of the draw and then I've, as I've been cleaning up the top surface, I've been looking at the timber and I think it's absolutely gorgeous, um, probably oak. So I might give this a sand with the electric sander just to see how it comes up. Sadly, I'd put the filler in um, because I thought I was gonna paint over it. I'll find another fix for that a little later on um, it may be just penning in the oak lines or something. So we'll fix that a little later on if I choose to. There is a deep water stain on top. So whether that will sand out or not, I don't know. Um, but we'll see as we get to that stage. And as for colour, originally I was going to go for a sperminty, sperm sort of soft, um, aquary blue, bluey green. Um, like a pale, very pale Provence, but I think that this is going to kick out a lot of bleed through, so that's another fix that I would have to do um, by priming it. So I'm thinking now I might go for a darker colour, maybe a mix on Fleur Paprika, um, something that's kind of a warm and red in tone for the lower half. That is if the timber comes up good. So. I'll fix the draw stay, start sanding, and then we can start thinking about handles, paintwork, and all of the rest, putting it back together.
the oak top has come up absolutely beautiful. Um, the wood underneath is really gorgeous. The grain is beautiful. I have got a couple of things to contend with at this stage in this process because I wasn't expecting to sand off the, the wooden top. I was going to go with a really soft um, spearmint blue over the whole piece um, and now this is kind of thrown a spanner in the works. So I have to contend with the fill holes. Um, that is a tinted two-part filler so I am going to use a colour wash over the top to stain this wood, knock out some of the yellow tones. I think I'm going to go with graphite, just a touch of graphite with plenty of water just to cool down the warmth in the top. Then we can have a look at how these look. They are really, really neat. It almost looks purposely meant to be there. So it may just get left. It may be a very clever hand painted um, finish over the top of them. And the bottom half, I have to pick a colour. And um, with this being sort of cottage farmhouse style, um, I'm thinking that we might go for like a deep brown red somewhere along the lines of Enfleur with paprika mix. So we've got this reddy orangey brown on the lower half. I think it'll look really, really lovely. And of course, handles. I've got some cup handles here. This one is something I've used before on another piece and it's quite angular. And I initially thought I'd go with that, but I think with the angles of the beadwork, I think that's a little bit too harsh. So I've pulled out a cup handle, a rounded one, which I think mirrors these lovely round corners in the beadwork. So I'm gonna go with a cup handle. So filling, sanding, drilling. So the handles are pre-cast ready to go on once it's all waxed. Um, and that's it. So they're the next few jobs. You may get a little bit of speeded up video the colour wash, I'm probably going to mix 40% um, graphite to 60% water and I will be applying water to the surface pre that and maybe a touch more with the atomizer. and I'm just going to use a cloth and rub that paint in. It will take minimal paint just to get it to a colour that I like. Graphite is really funny. When it's in a wash, it will go quite a lot paler once it's dry. It will seem quite dark, but when it dries, it will go paler and cooler. So don't panic. Um, as long as you can see the grain shining through it, it should be all right when it dries.
I'm now day two of this project and I'm super happy with the way the graphite stain has gone on the top of this oak. It's given it a really old rustic feel and I really love the colourway. I think it will work really well with the colour that I think that I'm going to choose. So there are a couple of things that you could do at this stage. You could give this a wax finish. You certainly would want to protect your um, stain on the top right now because it's a super thin coat of chalk paint, watered down chalk paint. If you get water on this, it's gonna make a watermark. So sealing at this stage is really important before going on to paint the lower half. So you could use wax, it will give a really durable finish, but I've decided to go in with Annie Sloan Matte Lacquer. There is a gloss lacquer if you want to go for a higher sheen, but I thought this would be nice and fine and it will still allow those grain, um, those open grain to show in the light. So I thought matte lacquer is for me. So I'm just going to give the can a good old stir and I'm using a soft synthetic brush and I'm going to go with the grain on the top of this piece and leave it to dry before we start choosing the colour mix for the lower half. <laughs> finish the outside coat. Remember this piece is going to be for resale so if you're working on a piece and you're selling it on then I would advise that you do on the internal spaces if the wood is not good and in this case the wood is in poor condition and is on the drawers. The thing about drawers you've got to make sure that there's enough give on the sides to allow the drawer to go in and out. So if it's a tight drawer fit, then you're gonna to need to sand down the edges of the drawers just to, and even inside this area, just to allow freedom for the drawer to run in and out. On this, In this case, there's plenty of room for the drawer to go. So I can paint the internal part of the drawer and the sides, and of course, on the internal of this cubby, which I'm going to do. Also, I'm going to paint the back and the underneath. Remember, if you're reselling a piece of furniture, most likely if they're gonna pick it up in a car or a van, they'll probably turn it on its back and push it into the vehicle and you will see the underneath. So cobwebs and dust and all of the other things that you might find underneath, in this case, the woodworm holes, which we're gonna cover over with the paint, they will feel like they've bought a really high-end product. So that's what we're gonna do. The only spaces that I perhaps won't paint on this piece is inside the side panels. I will paint the back so far up, but I won't paint the runners on the drawers. That can also create a little bit of friction with chalk paint on chalk paint. So these areas are probably gonna stay as is, but everything inside, and the internal of the drawers just to make a good job of the overall finish.
internal parts of the project are dry and they've had a second coat. The colour that I used was old ochre and I've decided to add a touch of design work on the internals of the drawers, the sides and inside the cubby hole. I'm going to be using an IOD stamp. This is Rose Toile. The colour that I've decided to go with to keep it kind of subtle is French linen which also kind of will tie into the woody tone that's on the top. So I've got my bray, I've got my French linen. I'm just gonna decant a little bit of French linen to a piece of card. And I'll roll out my bray roller and then we'll apply some rose toile.
hard work is now done. We can now focus on choosing our colour for the exterior of the piece. And I've been playing around with a few colour mixes. This is what I've come up with. I want a burnt sienna sort of colour, which I'm thinking this shade and this shade, which are not far off between one another, that is two parts, uh, two parts on Fleur, one part Paprika, and the other one is, this one, three parts Paprika, one part on Fleur. So I'm just gonna risk it for a biscuit. I'm gonna pop some um, on Fleur and Paprika into a mixing bowl. I'm gonna make plenty so I don't run out of that color, and then I can seal the container and save it for another project or another colour mix a little later on. So let's go with on fleur. I want it to be quite a browny red colour. A little bit more. And then we'll go paprika. See how that looks. Oh no, I think that's quite nice. It's like a dark sienna. will really work well with the wooden top and the um, old ochre interior. Right, just to see what the colour match is like, I'm just going to go with making a little pretty good match probably a little more paprika but I quite like that I'm gonna rock and roll with that color
I'm now day three of this project. All that's left to do now is wax the whole lower half of this project, reapply the handles. I've decided to go with a flat finish, no distressing on the whole piece, and that's because I want it still to appeal to two markets. Somebody that likes rustic, but also somebody that likes contemporary feeling pieces. So there is just one more fix on the whole piece. So when I flipped this piece upside down to find all of those woodworm holes underneath, I also found four large holes in each leg of the piece with some metal pins inside, which tells me this originally would have had some casters, some push fit casters would have gone in each leg, which I felt like the piece was very short and stunted. So adding that extra height really will elevate the whole piece. So I've worked out which sort of pin will go into the legs and I found an Amazon find and I really like this. It's a rollerball caster um, and I think it will really keep the piece looking contemporary. Only problem is it's a little bit dark. It's a bronze finish and if you look at the handle, the handle is kind of more of a sort of brushed brass feeling. So I've decided, I know that these are brass underneath, just to give a light sand with an, a fine annie sanding and sanding pad. And it should really, yeah, there you go. It just reveals, I won't take everything off, but just a little bit of that dark, let's put the handle together, we'll leave in the crevice, and you kind of get the same look. So that's all that's left to do. I'll let you watch me wax away and reapply the handles. Don't forget to stick around for the end stage shot so you can have a good look over the whole piece and see what you think. Thank you for joining me. I will catch you all next time.